Welcome everyone. In this video, we will talk about endodontic perforation, from basic knowledge to the most advanced situations, and how to manage these situations in your daily clinical practice. So, what is perforation? Perforation is an artificial communication between the root canal system and the supporting tissues of the teeth. Root perforation are caused either pathological by resorption and caries or iatrogenic during root canal procedures. Now let's talk about the types of perforation according to its site, we'll take it coronopically. Coronal perforation. It occurs due to disorientation of used burrs during access opening and locating the canals, mostly in case of calcified pulp chamber. It could be avoided by evaluating estimated length to the roof of pulp chamber, then mark it on the used burr. In case of doubt in the burr direction, you can always stop. Injection of radiopaque paste inside the cavity, like calcium hydroxide or bioceramic sealer. Then take a radiograph to confirm you're going the right direction toward the pulp chamber. Coronal perforation mostly happens in the upper anterior teeth, due to neglecting of orientation or inclination of the tooth. It also may happen in access opening and tilted teeth. Floor perforation. Mostly occurs due to failure to locate the canal orifices. Neglecting the floor map during searching for the canals could happen during post-placement. MB2 is always there. You hear this statement a lot but it is not true. MB2 prevalence ranges from 48% to 97.6%. With worldwide global prevalence of 73.8%. So MB2 is not always there, yes, you have to look for it, you have to try to find it, you have to use the known method trying to locate it, but it's not always there. If you keep digging trying to get the canal, you might end up with this kind of a perforation. Using magnification and ultrasonics in access cavity preparation and in finding the canals help to avoid this kind of perforation. Stripping perforation. It is a lateral perforation, caused by over-instrumentation through a thin wall in the root, and is most likely to happen on the inside or concave wall of a curved canal, such as distal wall of mesial roots in mandibular first molars. Stripping is easily detected by sudden appearance of hemorrhage in a previously dry canal, or by a sudden complaint by patient. Stripping perforation mostly occurs during the use of gate glidden inside the canal. During post-space preparation using large drills. During the use of large tapered file and brushing motion toward furcation area. Lateral root canal perforation. This type of perforation mostly preceded by a ledge, ledge, pressure at the curvature level, perforation. It also can happen during management of separated instrument using ultrasonic. This could be avoided by learning the principles of root canal shaping and developing the skills to manage severally curved canals. Factors influencing prognosis of endodontic perforation. Time, size, site, preoperative periodontic probing. For sure the skills of clinician and the clinical judgment also affect the prognosis. Time. What do we mean by time? It is the time between occurrence of perforation and the time of treatment. If you have a recent perforation and we treated it at the same visit, the treatment outcome will be better. In old cases, granulation tissue, hemorrhage, pus, epithelial proliferation takes place. And it becomes a very bad environment for application and setting of our repair materials. Site. We have coronal, cervical, or apical perforation. The worst scenario is to have a cervical perforation at the crestal area. Crestal area is the critical zone, as it's related to gingival sulcus. So you have a communication between area of a perforation and the oral fluids and bacteria. Bacterial entry and infiltration to perforation site could be quick. Crestal zone might be more apical in case of recession. Apical perforation better prognosis. Size. Small size perforation means easy application of perforation repair material, with better control on seal, so it has a good prognosis. Big size perforation means difficult application of perforation repair material, with low control on seal, so it has a poor prognosis. Preoperative depth of probing. Positive periodontic probing results in higher risk of recurrence than in cases with negative probing. How to diagnose endodontic perforation? Perforation can be diagnosed by periapical radiograph, cone beam CT. 
It also provides the precise site and location of the perforation. Clinical inspection. Here magnification shows a great importance in inspecting perforations in pulpal floor and sometimes the canal itself. File or gutta percha in estimated perforation site. Place file or gutta percha in perforation and take a radiograph. Using apex locator in case of normal canal without perforation, when you place a file, as you go deeper, you have a gradual decrease, until you reach the apex. However in cases of perforation, no gradual decrease, it suddenly reached the apex. Bleeding spot on paper point. Especially when you have a stripping perforation. Too many materials have been used for perforation repair. Nowadays, we are using mineral trioxide aggregate. MTA has a lot of advantages, including high pH after setting, antimicrobial effect and biocompatibility, dimensional stability, superior sealing ability, hydrophilic, as it sets in the presence of moisture. For application of MTA you need MTA carrier to deliver the material into the site of perforation, there are too many carriers, endodontic pluggers, for adapting MTA in perforation site. Micro brushes. For good adaptation of MTA on perforation margins. Paper points. For MTA compaction and to absorb moisture. Gelatin or collagen sponge. In cases of large perforations, where there is poor control on MTA application, and risk of material extrusion in periodontal area, sponge might be used to help as a matrix against compaction of MTA. It should be placed beyond the perforation margin, to ensure adequate seal to perforation site. It's resorbable, in 2-3 to three weeks, it will not be there. I'll show you in this case of open apex how to apply this sponge, as the same way we can apply in cases of perforation. This is collagen sponge. After determining the working length and where I should apply apical matrix, I mark the length on a plugger. Start to push the material apically to perforation margin. You should make sure that all the sponge is apical to the margin not inside the canal. Inside the canal it will resorb and will provide leakage. Now you have good apical matrix, and you have a good control on MTA placement, followed by gutta percha placement. The same technique you can use with perforation. Management of perforation cases. This case, we have coronal perforation, and growth of gingiva inside the perforation. Cases like this, we need to do excision to the overgrowth gingiva inside the tooth, it can be done with an excavator. After that we need to protect the canals with Teflon. Notice that, MTA is not recommended in such cases, we deal with it as a carious lesion, and use material like glass ionomer and composite. Some cases of coronal perforation we need to do crown lengthening, to respect the biological width, this is a case of floor perforation, in a two-rooted mandibular premolar, in this case we have two options. First option is to protect the canals with either Teflon or paper point, during application of MTA to perforation site. The second option is to protect the perforation site with Teflon, during obturation of these two canals. Now protect the two canal using paper point. After placing paper point, I need to confirm I have good access to the perforation site, to apply the roof repair material. Start apply MTA using map system.
Then using paper point or plugger, gently compact or adapt the material. Now you are ready to remove the paper point from the canal. Place cotton pellets in temporary filling, and next visit confirm MTA has set, then obturate, lateral canal perforation. This is a lower molar case with lateral root canal perforation. Precurve files to bypass the perforation to clean and shape the canal beneath it. Now obturate below perforation level. Then apply MTA at the site of perforation which is called sandwich technique. Thank you for watching our video. Please, do not forget to like and share the video. Also, please subscribe to the channel to stay updated to our latest videos.